Welcome to the final episode of a Market Emperor Scenic Showman's Engine and this one is part 7. More repairs and a second steam test. There's definitely a problem with the mechanical lubricator. Even though the lubricator appears to be full of oil, when I rotate the wheel, water comes out of it. You can see this because I've disconnected the pipe that feeds the cylinder. After I continue to turn the wheel on the lubricator, eventually some oil starts to come out of the pipe, but it took quite a while. Clearly there is a problem with the spring-loaded ball valve at the base of the lubricator. Normally with this type of mechanical lubricator, a check valve would be fitted to the steam chest, and this stops blowback, but on this engine there is no such thing. I've moved the pipe out of the way because I'm going to dismantle the T-piece that forms the inlet to the steam chest. In the last episode I modified this because I didn't like the design of it. There was a valve fitted on the steam line to the steam chest directly from the boiler, and as the steam chest contains the safety valves, I didn't think this was a good idea, because the other safety valve fitted to the top of the water gauge in the cab, and here it is, was sticking, it wasn't working at all. Even the stainless steel ball doesn't look very good, so I decanted some of the acid from my acid bath into a cap that normally sits on an aerosol spray can and put all the parts in there. In an hour or so the acid should have done its stuff and it should come out clean. At first I thought a valve on the steam line from the boiler was some sort of crude modification, but when I googled Marky Scenic Showman's Engine I found that that's the way they were designed and that's the way they are made. So I'm putting the engine back to how it was as I received it. Except that I've taken the safety valve from the cab apart, it's in the acid bath, and when that comes out of the acid bath I will reassemble it and set the pressure to 50 psi. And I've made the owner of the engine aware of what could happen if the safety valve in the cab sticks again. I thought I'd have a look at the one-way valve at the bottom of the lubricator and look at the mess I got out. Although it appears to have a stainless steel ball, the spring isn't stainless steel and it's in three pieces. Time, I think, to look for another spring to fit in this valve. This is one of my boxes of bits and pieces, and I can see some one-way valves in there, but the springs are too small in those. However, in my box of springs, I found one that would do the job. I cut this spring to the required length, cleaned up the end on the belt sander, and fitted it into the housing underneath the mechanical lubricator. After I'd done this, I connected the lubricator pipe back onto the T-piece. By now, the safety valve has come out of the acid bath and it's been rinsed off in water. I'm testing the spring using a magnet, and it's quite magnetic. However, it still could be stainless steel, and it's not too rusty. I reassembled the safety valve, and I set it using my air compressor. I set it to blow off at 50 pounds per square inch, after which I applied some Loctite 542 to the thread, and screwed it back in place on top of the water gauge. Time, I think, for a final steam test to make sure everything's working OK. I made sure the two water valves were fully open, put some water into the belly tank, and then pumped the water into the boiler. After quite a bit of pumping, the water was three quarters of the way up the water gauge glass. The next thing to do was to light the gas burner in the firebox, and after a while, I had enough steam to run the engine. And as soon as I admitted some steam to the steam chest, the engine burst into life. And once the initial condensed water cleared, it started to run quite sweetly. There isn't much pressure at the moment, and the regulator handle can be moved quite easily. Plenty of steam, or should I say water vapour, coming out of the chimney. And at 50 psi, the safety valve in the cab on top of the water gauge blows off. So that's OK, at least the engine's not going to explode. I'm running the engine fast, just to make sure nothing falls off it. Unfortunately though, as before, even though I've changed the spring, the mechanical lubricator is still overflowing, which means that water is being blown back into it. I spoke to the owner, who's picking the engine up on Thursday, and I mentioned that I think he should really buy a new pressure gauge, and maybe a new mechanical lubricator. I can fix the mechanical lubricator by putting a better one-way valve at the bottom of it, but then the engine would not be original, and from a collector's point of view, it's quite important to keep these sort of engines absolutely original. By adjusting the valve that controls the amount of steam that's let into the steam chest, 
does actually allow the regulator handle to be moved much more easily because there's less pressure holding its slide valve onto the port. By now the small gas tank at the rear of the engine is very chilled. The gas pressure has dropped. I've turned off the gas tap on top of the tank and I'm refilling it. And because the gas tank is very very cold and the commercial gas cylinder that I'm holding is now quite warm, the liquid gas flows into the gas tank very well. In no time at all, once I lit the gas burner, the pressure soon increases inside the boiler. Time to make sure that the safety valve is doing what it's supposed to do. And this time the safety valve blows off just over 50 psi. Making me jump and filling the cab with steam, what a brilliant design. I would call this the Iron Maiden effect because on the old film the Iron Maiden they had a pretend safety valve in the cab that they kept hitting with a hammer. The engine runs ok now in both directions, it still needs a little bit more steam when it runs in a forward direction. This is possibly due to the ports being machined badly on the port face in the cylinder. I found it quite difficult to get the valve timing just right and a compromise had to be arrived at. And that's it. One marquee scenic showman's engine in working order. Well, apart from the mechanical lubricator and the pressure gauge and the fact that the cylinder's not machined properly, but it's OK, it runs well enough. I'll conclude this short series by leaving some shots of the engine running on the bench. I'd just like to say, as always, stay safe, stay well, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back, making it unnecessary to comment that the videos are too short.